Welcome to this quick tutorial about getting started with Structure, the world's most advanced graph application platform. In the next six minutes, you will get an overview of the user interface and the most important functions of Structure. Let's start with logging in, using the standard credentials, admin, admin. After the very first login, we land on the dashboard page. The dashboard page displays some useful information and additional functionality, covered in other tutorials. First, we'll take a look at the Page Builder tool. Here, you can create and manage the front end of your web application. The most simple way to start with an application is to create a new empty page. Just click on the green, plus icon. You find all your pages and their elements in the area labeled as, Pages Tree View on the left-hand side. The Pages Tree View is a collapsible slide-out area. Any slide-out on the left-hand side can be resized horizontally by dragging the vertical tab. Elements in the Page Tree can be moved around by drag and drop. To insert new elements, you can either use the context menu on right-click or drag an element from the HTML palette area on the right onto an existing element. It will be appended at the end after existing child elements. The current page is displayed in the preview window on the right. Any modification automatically refreshes the preview so you can see the results immediately. The preview area also allows for simple in-page editing. Just click on an element and modify the text. Press the tab key or click anywhere outside the element to store its new value. Text can also be dynamically generated by template expressions. In this example, it's the name of the current page. Note the capitalize function to convert the first character to uppercase. See how the text changes when we modify the page name. Next, let's check out the files area. It is the user interface of Structure's virtual file system. You can create and manage folders and files. To create a new folder, click on the Add Folder button. To rename a folder or file, simply click on its name, change the value, and hit Enter. To upload a file, drag a file from your desktop onto the main area to add it to the current folder. You can also create a new file directly by clicking on Add File. Files and folders can be moved by dragging and dropping them onto another folder. This also works with folders in the tree as drop target. Folders and files can be assigned individual permissions, just like any other object in structure. Just click on the key icon to open the access control and visibility settings dialog. Next up is security. The area, security is divided into two parts. In the, users and groups area, you can create groups and users. Rename them by clicking on the name and change the value, then hit return to save. To build a group hierarchy, just add users or groups to a group by drag and drop. A group hierarchy can be used to define a role because permissions granted to a particular group, are inherited to all its members. On the second tab, you find the, resource access grants area. This tool allows you to manage fine-grained access control to any resource path of the built-in web service API. For any combination of an HTTP verb, like get, put, or post, as displayed on the x-axis, and a unique resource path signature, here on the y-axis, access can be individually allowed for both, authenticated and non-authenticated users. Another important area is schema. The schema tool is used for data modeling in structure, allowing you to define the way your application's data is stored. When you start structure for the first time, there are a couple of existing data types, represented as nodes in the schema graph, connected by relationships which define how your data objects are related. Creating a new type is as simple as entering a class name and hit enter or click the add button. After each modification, the new data model is compiled and activated in Structure's kernel. Depending on the size of the model and the server performance, it takes a couple of seconds to finish. To define new relations, simply draw an arrow between two types. This will create a new relationship in the schema graph. 
Edit the relationship to set a type which defines the relation's semantics. For each relation created, two attributes on each of the data types are created automatically, providing access to objects of the connected type. You can of course also add attributes of various types to store whatever values on your data objects. The updated data model can be used immediately after. This allows you to rapidly build the back end of your application. We conclude our short intro demo with the data area. With this handy tool you can create, update, and delete stored data objects. The table displays a list of objects of the type which is selected on the left. The most recently selected types are saved in the list below. There's also a simple CSV export function to copy data to a text area, or import from CSV text copied to that area. There are plenty of other functions in structure that help you building applications. These will be covered in future demo videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching. Check out structure.com for updates. We'll publish new content on a regular basis to keep you informed.